until finally my mom stepped in and he, she said, uh, oh, after Sunday church, she said, oh, you know, today I told the whole congregation to pray for you. And I remembered, instead of being grateful, I screamed at her. I said, you mean you told the whole congregation your daughter Sharon Ao is depressed? Oh, my reputation oh, no. is damaged and I remember now I even even talking about this now, this is one of the worst things I've ever said to my mom. Hey, this is Jean Danker and welcome to the Are You OK podcast. I'm so excited today. You know, I was researching this woman last night and I was thinking of this big intro to give you, Sharon, and I was like, what am I gonna say about her? She's such a multi-hyphenate. She's so multifaceted. Um, I wanted to say entertainer, comedian, <laughs> host, also like investment director at a private equity firm in Paris. <laughs> but essentially like so brainy and so interesting to talk to. I'm so happy that you're here. It's Miss Sharon Ow. Hello everyone. Jean, I was about to say, we don't need any introduction, you know, between <laughs> us. We should just say... Me and Jean Denker, we are like, we go way back. We go way back, way from uh, National Day Parade. Yeah. I think 1998 or something. I think the first one I yes. ever did, I think you was must with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just going to introduce myself, Sharon Ao, co host with Jean Denker, NDP forever. Yeah. Good times. I still have the pictures. Um, I do too. When I look back at it, I. Many years. Yeah. Every year. You know, we're just in different shades of red. Yes. And then our hairstyles just change. <laughs> yeah. But basically, the energy is the same. <laughs> yes. But good times. I think like time has flown by so fast. Yeah. Um, and look at us here now in... All grown up. All grown up, you know. Hopefully... So sensible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about uh, that. For me. <laughs> but you're, you're, you know, look at you. You're so put together. You've got things going on. Um, and you're such a big risk taker as well. I love having chats with you, whether on my radio show or whether or not we, we meet. Mm. Um, you're, you're such an interesting brain. And a lot of things also have happened to you in this life of yours, ups and downs, Sharon. So uh, many things have so happened. So many actually. things. And likewise for you. Likewise. I think we've all gone through our our fair share of, you know, heartbreaks. Yeah. And then failures. Yes. Victories, yes. I can say. Yeah. Um, but let's start off with right now. What's your hit space right now? What What's in your mental hit space and how are you? Uh, okay, right now I'm a, I'm, I'm a little bit in a little bit of a, a bipolar state. Okay, okay. <laughs> I always get into this state of mind whenever I'm involved in the theatre production, which mm. is currently my current project, yeah. which is why I came back to Singapore. Uh, because in this play, I uh, my role is someone who is very uh, um, uh, volatile, uh, explosive, uh, and, and say what she thinks and feels. And she has immense communication problem with everyone around her. So right. imagine to play someone like that <sighs> when you are already in a very calm, rested yeah. uh, state of Parisian with my <laughs> retire with my cat state of mind. <laughs> so, so I feel, yeah, that's, that's when the bipolarism comes in. Uh, wow. Other than that, I'm also very, very pleased to come home again. Yeah. Uh, during this period where, you know, reunions are very important, much more important than before. Yeah. So I cherish now every contact, uh, every face-to-face chat and uh every connection actually yeah mm. can i ask how do you separate that character because that sounds really uh, in a space that's different from you mm. i mean are you a bit more method do you do you take it with you i mean a little bit in real life because you you know i uh, uh, in that I role i don't know about method though i i feel that might be a little bit too dangerous and insane to yeah. go. Uh, uh, but I, I try to draw from my own experiences in the past. Yeah. Um, uh, the times where I was volatile, the times where I had problems speaking and communicating and expressing my thoughts to, to people around me. So those were my uh, growing up days. Yeah. Uh, and also the, the depressive days when I was going through uh, many, many issues at the same time. Right. So I draw from experiences. I think, I think actors are like that. Mm. You know, you cannot all depend on imagination. You need to draw from some true life, genuine emotions yeah. so that you add some depth to the performance. Yeah. But again, not everything should be genuine. I've seen actors who who just couldn't get out of their role, yeah, and that to me can be quite uh, uh, destructive. 
yes. to their personal life and also to the way the way they balance their their output. Yeah. To me, acting involves some form of acting. Yes. 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 Don't yeah. have to be hundred percent your own. Correct. Yeah. That's then you, really well if you said. can't get out of it, then uh, you're then, in trouble. Yeah, in trouble. <laughs> yeah. You need help. You definitely need, you need help. This show. Are you okay? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Um, I was reading. Um, uh, I think you all, you do um, a contributor column to one of our local newspapers. Ah, yes, yes, a monthly monthly column. Yeah, is this something that you regularly still do? Yes, I still you do. You do. That do? Now. Okay. It started because I moved to Paris. Yeah. So um, um, the paper actually wanted some sort of like a foreign correspondent yeah. kind of uh, contribution, and after that, I just couldn't stop writing. Great. It's good. I, I, do you, do you find it cathartic? Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. And uh, instead of just writing uh, as a diary entry, which I still keep a yeah. diary after all these years. You do? So now I just translate some of the la, the censored version okay, uh, yeah. to be published uh, for the public to yeah. read. Um, one, of the th- one of the articles I read about was um, about you suffering from PTSD. Mm. Um, that was brought on mostly by the fact that you were you, you were in Japan when that whole 9.1 earthquake slash then su- tsunami happened. Yes, the Kanto huge disaster. Yeah, mm. and then there was a situation where you were at a meeting and mm. and you felt like everything was tilting and shaky and and um and all that. Can you can you tell us about a little bit about that? Yeah, that because I just. Uh, return from um, Tokyo. Yeah. So um, the 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 disaster happened March 11, and that was the uh, the month I was supposed to graduate and come back to Mediacorp to serve my bond. Mm. So by the end of March, I was back here, and the first meeting I attended, I felt the the earth shake. It was, it was definitely for me very real. Yeah. And it wasn't a question when I told everyone to get under the table because yeah. that was the drill. Yes. which we were used to. And when 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 we all realized that I there wasn't there was no earthquake, uh that was when my boss then uh very kindly put me aside to tell me that maybe I should see someone to a counselor, yeah. someone to talk to. And I I, I didn't heed his advice actually because I thought I was okay and I was pretty sure that nobody felt that shake. So my theory was, because I was so used to earthquake, I knew when the earth shake. But because you guys have never right. experienced, so you didn't even know that it was shaking. You probably thought you were fainting or something. Yes, right. it's quite logical. So that was my logic. Yeah, yes, see? yes. But then realized I re- later on, I realized it wasn't <laughs> oh, the no. truth. Oh, I was just in my own PTSD state, which, oh, you know, at that point, I have never even heard of that name. Uh, uh, unless you count the times I watched Grey's Anatomy, okay? Right, yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, the medical yeah. terms, but... So it was something very, very new to me to 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 have to uh, accept that about myself. Yeah. Because it shows weakness. Like, w- why are you so weak? You know. <sighs> yeah. So that was that was, and that was all within the first few months right. of me returning back to Singapore. Yeah. Did you um, eventually see somebody, and did you get help for it? And how are you with it now? Does it still affect you in, in some small way, shape, or form? Uh, I know. No, I feel that I feel, for, at least for in my own opinion, yeah. I've completely recovered from okay. that. Uh, I didn't see someone immediately because even when I attempted to see counselors and uh, very well-known psychiatrists who were referred to me, uh, um, I didn't get the help um, that was expected mm. um, I've met therapists who were quite condescending um, so this is something that's why when I wrote it for the article I was very careful with the words because I didn't want to undermine nor criticize this profession yeah but you know we are all humans so there are indeed there were indeed therapists I've met who were just very dis- dismissive of my problems. There was one who was a very, very experienced and well-known in Singapore. He actually turned to me and said, Hiya! You just miss Japan lah. You know, in one sentence. So can you imagine you pay a lot of money for that 45-minute session? And the first few minutes he said, he already dismissed you with Uh. a wave of his hand. It wasn't like the TV shows where, you know, your therapists are very attentive. No, he was actually just looking at his notes scribbling he wasn't even oh giving me God. his attention you know just like ah you miss japan la. So, <gasps> i remember i gave up then but i had to sit through 
and complete and the 45 in, minute session. Yeah. So I, I, I remember just agreeing with him so that I can get it over and done with. Right. So I said, yes, so I think I miss Japan. You're right. And then he said, you know, uh, Japan killed many people during World War, you know. They killed many people, you know. So... <laughs> Oh my gosh! At that point, I'm I remember. So sorry, you went through yeah. that. That's horrible. Yeah, especially for someone who went there so vulnerable. But I remember then. Then it was very hilarious for me because I actually thought to myself, "Okay, I think this guy needs therapy too." <laughs> he, he probably he does. Have, he must have some personal uh, grudge. True. And and he his his grandparents must have gone through the war. Mm. So he must have some unresolved <laughs> issues. Because the first few things he said is, you know, Japan killed many people. <laughs> so oh, I realized all of us need therapy at some point. The more we come out and admit to ourselves we have some unresolved issues, the the, the earlier the better. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm glad you brought that point up that you know not all therapy is gonna work and it's gonna take some time for you to find a right therapist. Yeah, I so, think, so don't give up, that's the thing. Yeah. Which I did, I gave up. And so that was the end of your... That was the yeah. end. And so I continued to suffer and wallow in my own self-pity. And until finally my mom stepped in and he, she said, uh, oh, after Sunday church, she said, oh, you know, today I told the whole congregation to pray for you. And I remembered, instead of being grateful, I screamed at her. I said, you mean you told the whole congregation your daughter Sharon Al is depressed? My reputation oh, no. is damaged and I remember now I even even talking about this now, this is one of the worst things I've ever said to my mom. I should have said, Thank you so much. You know, no wonder I felt better or something. But mm. I just screamed at her and uh and, 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 and all I kept was my reputation. So there again that's the other stigma that mm. being depressed uh is deemed as a, a, a form of failure yeah. so much so that you feel that you need to protect your reputation as being Sharon Ow, you right. know, the, the cheerful and jovial uh, yeah. host um, but, but even after my outburst and being completely unfilial and uh, unreasonable my mom said my point is one counsellor stepped forward and approached me and told me she would like to speak to you so I said, I have enough with therapists, okay? They tell me Japan kill people, okay? Uh, and she said, no, 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 she's not a therapist. She's just a counsellor. Uh, so she, she just... And she, she mends a uh, suicide helpline. Mm. So she is used to talking to people who just, you know, are feeling really at the bottom of the abyss. Yeah. And thankfully for that action of, uh, from my mom, I met up with her. Her name is Corinne. And there began my counselling session with her privately in her home. Mm. And that actually was paved the way to my recovery. Wow. Yeah. Because you must know, you know, talking about it is one thing, it's stage one. Because you, you start to admit to yourself, this is what happened and this is how you feel and what should I do? I'm asking for help. So mm -hmm. that was stage one. But the next step to completely... Uh, be on the right road to recovery, you actually need some medication. Mm. So that is something um, a counsellor cannot dispense. That's yeah. when she would have to refer you to the medical uh, institutions where you yeah. get the right uh, dosage, right medication, right help. Mm. But by then, you are prepared already. Yeah. So I also discourage people who straight away just dash straight to a clinic and ask for antidepressant. I see. That to me is also not the right way to cope with all your your pain. Because that that is like just a, 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 a temporary suppressant. But it yep. doesn't solve your issues. So that means you're going to depend on that pill for, right. forever and ever. Yeah. So unless you resolved your all your past hurt and all the trauma, mm. you, 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 you shouldn't jump straight to taking medication. Yeah. So there are different, different stages. And that's why it's very important to really seek professional help. Yeah. Talking to friends, is it, it helps. But that's just one section mm. of the, the, the recovery uh, map. Yeah. Then talking to a counsellor, to people you trust, and then opening up to your own parents. That's yeah. very important. Yeah. Instead of screaming at them. <laughs> and then <laughs> your mom is quite a superhero. I was reading in that article as well that you were talking about how you were sharing with her about 
having suicidal thoughts. And, yeah. And she actually sort of like, I'm sure, found it very hard in herself to say, if that is what is going to make you free and happy, then so be it. But I will spend the rest of my life crying every day over over you. Yeah. I yep. mean, yep. That, I, I was so heartbroken just yep. reading about that. You know, um, what was what was that moment like for you? Um, I was, I, you know... I cannot remember what drove me to to that state where I completely feel that it's pointless to continue. All I knew was I was desperate to, I need to tell my mom because it has always been just the two of us. So I need to tell her that I, the your cheerful and wonderful and marvelous daughter is not feeling very well to the extent that I really, I think I don't want to live. Um, it wasn't like, mom, I'm going to kill myself. It was more of like, I don't want to live. So when I confided in her, her reaction really made me feel the, the, um, the, the strength of a mother. If she had broken down and gone, um, hysterical, I think I, I, it would have made me feel worse. Mm. It, it, it probably would have really driven me to, <laughs> to do something silly. But the fact that she just sat there and she took it in and she said, I really just want you to be okay. And if you don't think you're okay anymore in this sphere, okay, you go, I, I will pray for you. And I'm sure um, the Lord will, will be taking care of you. And I'm sure, he, I think she said something like, I'm sure he will do a much better job than me. Which, so, wow. so it hit me that uh, she didn't do the melodramatic thing and she's so sensible. She just wanted me to be happy. And her her stance right there made me feel that, Sharon, oh, wake the f up. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how can you leave? Your mother sitting there thinking that she has not done her job and she can't do anything and you you you, you want to leave her, you know? Yeah. So I just told myself, oh my God, I'm not going to die. <laughs> the more I'm not going to die. Okay, I'm just going to, okay, let me see what I can do. Let me see what I can do. Yeah. So uh, that woke me up. That woke me up and I went to work to Media Corp. I dived myself into all the projects. Like I said, who needs volunteer? Who needs a project person? Who needs project manager, coordinator, who needs any any yeah. help. And of course, everybody needed help then, you know, <laughs> in media corp, yeah. we are all very busy, multitasking. Yes, that's right. So I just make myself very, 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 very busy so that I don't uh, just wear low at home and think of ways to end my life. Wow. And it helped, you know, actually immediately, the moment you stand up and go to work, it, it helped. The, yeah. the fact that you drove out, no matter you're in tears or your hair messy or whatever you're feeling, as long as you drove out, Face the world, have some sun sunshine, yeah, and talk to your colleagues, and then and then the good thing is you'll meet very annoying colleagues, right? Yes. So it will it will trigger <laughs> another thought that's completely away from a depression, and you just go like, oh my god, why are you so <laughs> not productive? Okay, so you know you will meet annoying people, irritating people. You meet people, yes. Okay, people yes. make you laugh, people make you angry, and that's then you realize it's all part of the whole joy of being alive yeah so thank god i didn't you know do anything silly that's why i always advocate whenever you feel that's the end just go out okay just wherever you're wearing just put on the shoes and just go out yeah you see some cats or dogs you see someone you you meet a person you you will buy a piece of bread yes you know you would you will, you will have something that will just shake you out of that yeah that, that rut it's it's so important to just move just, yes, just move, move yes. right? Go, leave the house, yeah. move, walk around because you never know where your brain space goes once exactly. it's outside. It's freer. Exactly. It's free from the confines of the house yes. and your thoughts, yes. right? And once you leave your energy, you will 
you will meet with other energy, yes. more positive ones or, or combustible ones where you can actually feel it molecule moving, you know. So I strongly believe in this whole energy and aura. Yeah. So the worst thing you do really is to sit there and stare into space. Yeah. Okay, that's the worst. Because yeah. you're just engulfing yourself with your own negativities. Yeah. yeah. You have... Um a lot of hobbies. I, I see you've taken up like so much hobbies. Is this part yes. of your like self care as well? <laughs> that was uh, how I coped through the COVID um, yeah. uh, confinement in Paris, in France, because yeah. we were locked down for a long time, um, um, for about nine months, mm. um, and we had curfew. So even when we uh, were out and free to roam, we still had times where we had to stay at home yeah. and we couldn't go to work. So that was when I wanted to occupy my mind uh, with constructive things mm. that was fun. Yeah, I think we have uh, forgotten what it feels to be um, innocent and childlike again. Um, so every now and then I would encourage and share with people to go back to your very beginning Think of that time in your life where you felt the most alive, where everything is possible. Your dreams have, you know, just been uh, generated and you were so young and you knew that in the next 10 or 20 years, you are going to get there. So usually this period of time must be a very, very young time in your life uh, where you first started to go to school. So I would really uh, remind all of us to always go back to that point where you felt real uh, aspiration, real ambition, real joy, and and the fact that anything and everything is possible. That yeah. sounds amazing. When you think back about the, the lightest moment, brightest moment, yes. where, where did you immediately go to? At which age were you... At that point, primary one, yeah, primary one. I, 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 I don't know why, but because probably I was pining for my parents because they were already divorced, so I don't see them anymore. Yeah. So I remember primary one in the bathroom. I was just showering, showering because that was the only time you you have to yourself. Yeah. Once I stepped out the bathroom, I was in the whole compound <laughs> of uh, of children because I was put in a in a home. Right. So. I remember in the in the in the bathroom, I was just thinking to myself, when I grow up. You know, I'm going to be so famous, so much so that I'll be, my names will be spread, my name will be spread across the newspapers so that one day when my parents, wherever they are, they picked up and they read and they realized, hey, there's my daughter, I better go look for her. So that was my way to attract their attention. Right. So I told myself I have to be very famous, but not by killing someone, because that, that, that your name will also be on <laughs> yeah, papers. That's so right. sorry. But I wanted to be like a famous lawyer, yeah. uh, win some lawsuits, and then, you know, my name will be like, whoa, you know, sure yeah. enough, I want this. Or doctor, save like 10,000 lives. So I wanted to be, to, so imagine you were thinking of that kind of yeah. career path, all in the hopes that your parents would one day remember that, they had mm. you <laughs> oh my God. somewhere. And you know, but that but that moment I can still remember till today because I was full of hope. Mm. I knew that I would make that happen. Yeah. Well yeah. you have. You have made that happen. You yeah, materialized I, yes, it. I materialized. I played many doctors and I played many <laughs> lawyers on TV <laughs> and on stage. I did make that happen. But the funny thing was, the irony was my name was really in the papers. But for not for that reason, but because I, I became a quite a famous TV. Exactly. Host. <laughs> no, I mean you you did visualize it, you did, did manifest it. I did. You know? And my dad really did read about it. Oh wow. And and, and my dad really did say, Hey, this is my daughter. <laughs> then the, his friends like, but I've never heard you. <laughs> you had a daughter. Yeah, yeah, this is my daughter. Oh Jin Xian. Oh, 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 that's my surname. That's really yeah. nice. So I think that was how I also got reconnected with him. Right. So are you are you still connected with your, with yes, your dad yes, now? Yes, okay. yes. Okay. So never, never underestimate silly and the craziest things you do and you think when you were young. So yeah. I was only seven years old. Wow. Primary one. I think when when people are in a state of like some kind of um mental health block or mm. you're feeling like you're not in a great state, it's all, mm. it's good to dream about. What do you want to do with your future? Because you have a future. Every one of us has a future. Mm. You know, no matter how old yeah. or young you are, it's really healthy to dream about yeah. and make these dreams a reality. And you, you just never know. And I, I fully believe in like putting it out there and and the energies and everything and the universe, whatever you believe in, 
it happens. It will. It will. It really, really does. Yeah. So everybody, okay, go home now and do an exercise. Just take that photo of yourself when you were the happiest. You can be very young or it can be just yesterday when you were like joyous. Take yeah. that photo and just put it next to you um, mm. uh, on your bedside or pin it on your fridge so yeah. that whenever you feel like you want to give up on yourself, you take a look at that photo yeah. and then and then ask yourself, would you give up on this person mm. is, who is beaming with so much possibilities and love? Yeah. Would you give up on her? Would you want to end her life? No, it's, yeah. it's, it's incredulous, right? Once you think about and shift your perspective this way. So we're taking a little mental break here with Sharon and with a little challenge for her. And uh, we've got glasses. As you can tell, she's going to make music. Or at least try to make music. <laughs> I don't Saying know I is. love you <laughs> is not the one that he will always do I did not see that coming. <laughs> JJ Lin would be so proud. <laughs> oh, excellent. Excellent. Hey, Miss Sharon now. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful. It's a very nice break. After all that sharing, you realize actually I'm, I'm insane. <laughs> Are you okay? I am not okay. <laughs> After all. Wow, <laughs> I had so much fun today catching up with you, Sharon. Thank you for making Thank the you. time to join us and sharing your life story. And I am sure more than one person out there is going to be affected by today and perhaps reach out to get some help mm. and, and move and, and get out of the house, out of your headspace. And also, you know, find a, a, a point in your life where you're fully joyous mm. and get to that place of lightness and happiness again. Thank you so much, Sharon. Thank you, Jean. <laughs> Thank you. I think that the funny part when I see these comments is that I realise that a lot of people sort of like feel certain ways or have certain emotions or have certain feelings and they think that they're the only ones that have that. Mm. But because they don't actually speak about it or share with people about it, then they think, oh yeah, I think I'm, alone. I'm the only one in the world that feels like that, but it's never the case, right? We're yeah. all human and we yeah. all have the same kind of like... Yeah. Whether or not you know, it's distortions, whether or not it's whatever it is, right? We all yeah. have a lot in common.